All right, folks, we are back here on Issues and Answers Friday. My country, Scott Cannon. Just got finished talking about Hunter Biden's sweetheart deal gone bust and whether that implicates his father, whether his father's been implicated in any way. I say yes. Um, But right now, I want to get into a very serious situation that happened earlier this week. Um, Bronny James, LeBron James Jr., uh, the son of one of the great NBA players of all time, LeBron James Sr., uh, was hospitalized on Tuesday, a day after going into cardiac arrest while participating in a practice at the University of Southern California. A family spokesperson said the spokesperson said that the medical staff treated the 18 year old James on site at USC's Galen Center after he went into cardiac arrest on Monday morning. He was transported to a hospital where he was in stable condition Tuesday after leaving the intensive care unit. Now, he was stricken just over a year after USC freshman Seven-footer Vincent Iwuk Kuchu also collapsed during a practice. Now, Iwuk-chuku, he's, he's got to be Nigerian. This is one of the Nigerian names right here. Uh, this brother not only survived, but returned to play for the Trojans in the second half of the season. Now, Dr. Samir Amin a cardiologist and the chief medical officer at the LA care health plan is not treating Bronnie James, but said that the teenagers move out of intensive care is encouraging. He said, it's a really positive sign that they didn't, that he didn't sustain too much brain damage or any brain damage or any major heart damage in the setting of their heart stopping. Usually when we see when someone's heart gets restarted very quickly after it starts, Also, in young people, you tend to get these bounce backs a lot faster. It's a really positive outcome that he's already out of the intensive care unit. Uh, Dr. Amin also said that it's too soon to speculate on whether Bronny James will ever be able to return to basketball or how quickly that could happen. Oh, here goes this name again. Uwuchukwu. Uwuchukwu. Yeah, got to be Uwuchukwu. That's right. I got it. Uchukwu, one of the nation's top basketball prospects from a year ago, went into cardiac arrest. Let me get back down here. He went into cardiac arrest on July 1st, 2022, with athletic trainers using an automatic external defibrillator to revive him. Uchukwu had a battery-powered pulse-generated generator known as an implantable cardioverter defibrillator implanted into his chest. Wow. Uchukwu made his Trojans debut on January the 12th and eventually appeared in 14 games, including five starts. And he is is expected to return to play with Bronny, if Bronny can come back, to USC, which is expected to have a powerhouse team. So, You know, all prayers to Bronny. Oh, let me just say this. Uh, I just saw today Bronny is out of the hospital. So that is very good news as well. Uh, Bronny's been released from the hospital. He's with his family right now. And uh, that's that's good. That's a very good thing. Uh, I don't know if uh, all of you are old enough to remember Hank Gathers. I remember Hank Gathers. I was a very small child watching Hank Gathers back in the 80s or 90s. In the 80s or 90s when uh, Hank Gathers had his heart attack. And I remember that was one of the most tragic events in the history of sports. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was a very small child at the time, but it was a very big deal at the time. Hank Gathers 
was one of the best college basketball players of all time. If I'm not mistaken, he like led the college in scoring and rebounds. Like he's one of the leading scorers and leading rebounders in in the country. Uh, ultra talented brother, very very talented brother. Was definitely going to the NBA. And he just died right there on the court. While his parent, his mother was there. His mother and sister were there watching. One of the most horrifying sights I've ever seen in sports. One of the most tragic scenarios I've ever seen in sports. Hopefully medical technology has come far enough. Hopefully we've learned enough about the heart in the time since Hank Gather died. Hank Gathers died that we can prevent things like this happening in the near future. Let me get this call. Hello, caller. Hello, caller. Hello, caller. Okay, let me go to this other caller. Hello, caller. Hey, brother Scott, how you doing? It's all good, brother. What's going on? Hey, hey um, with all of these young fellas falling out, I'm wondering if it's because they got that jab. Well. They got got that shot that nobody really studied or nobody, you know, they didn't even do it on lab rats. You know, they did it on human beings. Right. About uh, within the last couple years. And nobody wants to, you know, they say, well, he was doing steroids and he was doing all of this and yeah, but mm-hmm. how much has they been affected? Mm-hmm. Because I, I seen a video of LeBron James saying his whole family, it was healthy and, and yeah. well, with his studies and everything that he's done, he and my whole family were going to get the jab and now is it coming back to harm Ooh, that's a good question. Thank you for your call. I'm about to get into that in a minute, brother. All right. All right, thank you for your thank call. You. Let me get this next caller. Hello, caller. Hey, brother, how you doing? It is all good, my man. I'm just passing through on my way to a conference in Milwaukee, and I've been listening. You know, the sad thing about this, uh, what you were talking about, about uh, Hunter Biden, is that the only reason people are upset is because not their guy. Yep. <laughs> yep. You better believe. the other people that are not upset, they're not upset because it's their guy's son. Yep. The idea that we actually have objective right and wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, like that little thing that, uh, that one ABC newscaster called, the Ten Commandments, not Ten Suggestions. Mm-hmm. It's how far we gone in the pursuit of winning yep no no it, it's not about loving our neighbor as ourselves it's not about actually wanting to do what's best you know for the greatest amount of people it's just about winning mm-hmm. and controlling and being in control and that is frustrating mm-hmm. because there's no way that this trajectory ends well no it doesn't you know the most benevolent dictator is still a dictator. Yep. And this is how it happens. This is what happens in third world countries every day. Every day, all day. And and here you're sitting here. The people that are, quote, unquote, on the progressive left are going to want to stone you because how dare you, mm-hmm. you know. What about Trump? People, you know, people on the right are going to say, you're not going far enough. Well, or... How dare you own? How dare you not only talk about him? Why are you talking about our dirty laundry? Because mm-hmm. dirt is dirt. Mm-hmm. And I know the days of you know Mr. Smith goes to Washington are so far in the past that there's a generation now that doesn't even know what that means. But the idea of people in public service because it is service, as opposed to because it's a paycheck. Right. Whether it's locally, at state level, or even at the federal level, we've got to find a way to get back to that concept of of the little platoons, the people who care about their community for its own sake, 
not for what it can do for them. And if we don't get there in a hurry, Mm-mm. you won't just be saying this is like a third world. We're going to be saying this is a third world place. Yep. Because when the crash hit, <laughs> all the economic blinders that we've had that allowed us to somewhat ignore this will be gone. Yeah, I agree with so, you 100%. Enjoying you while I'm in you all uh, <laughs> AM and FM footprint. But yes, you know, you always, you, Rev, you, you can call it anytime. Anytime, Rev. I know. <laughs> I know. It's just that I'm in that Eastern time zone yeah, now. Yeah, I know. Formally, and it is so weird because at 9.30 it's still shining. Right. It's like daytime at 9.30 at night. Oh, so man. I'll sit there on a Friday night, yeah, almost every Friday, thinking, I'm going to call Scott today. I'm going to call Scott today. <laughs> and then I get caught up in cooking or doing something with the girls. And next thing I know, it's 9 o'clock. Oh, like, man. Oh, here we go again. Right. But I'm going to be back through this way uh, next week. And, you know, hopefully we'll get a chance to holler at each other. Yes. Yes, call at each other. All right. Rev, thank you for calling in. Thank you for calling in, brother. It's all all good. Yes, the Rev, always, always bringing the insight, the truth, and the wisdom. Yes. Never forget to love thy neighbor as thyself. Um, But as our first caller, our first caller talked about, you're seeing all these young athletes who are just falling out, magically falling out. What if I told you that over the past two and a half years, the number of athletes who are suffering sudden cardiac arrest and related issues has soared to astronomical levels? Now, again, before I get started, let me just say I'm not a doctor. I'm not involved in the medical profession. I'm not giving any advice to anybody or telling anybody what to do or what not to do with their bodies. I have to preface everything I say with that because um, the cyber police will definitely make sure that, uh, you know, things get taken down if you go too far or, or make any, any claims. But in early 2021, Young athletes started suddenly collapsing with heart-related medical emergencies. Since then, get this, 1,884 cardiac arrests or other serious issues have been recorded amongst athletes, just athletes, young athletes. Unfortunately, 1,310 of those athletes died suddenly. We've had over 1,300 athletes die suddenly in the last two and a half years. The good folks at Good Sciencing, they maintained a non-exhaustive and continuously growing list of young athletes who suffered major medical issues in 2001, 2002, and the first half of 2003. Now, according, this is not me saying this, according to Good Sciencing, all the athletes on the list share one common factor. They suffered sudden serious health issues after receiving one or more doses of the, of the, the shot. As of April 2023, Good Scienting had recorded 1,884 athlete cardiac arrests or sudden issues since January of 2021. Now, they haven't even recorded a very recent incident where four rugby players in New Zealand had a, 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 a situation in, uh, where uh, in, in the Auckland suburbs, where four uh, rugby players, two, two 
suffered critical life-threatening injuries in consecutive weeks after collapsing on the field. So we, we've seen we've seen that happen to multiple pl- players all over the world. We're seeing this all over the world. Uh, Mark Crispin Miller, the journalist, has been recording died suddenly cases worldwide. Uh, in his latest compilation, he recorded that 57 New Zealanders who were reported as unexpectedly or suddenly losing their lives between June 19th and June 26th. Now, he, he has not said that it is specifically related to the jab. He's not said that. Okay, and I'm not saying that. Okay, it's important to say that I'm not saying that. Now, recent studies have shown that specific communities of people have not suffered any mysterious sudden deaths or heart attacks. Namely, the Amish. Think about it. The Amish have not suffered any excess deaths from COVID or any increases in cardiac arrests. The Amish people completely ignored CDC guidelines during the pandemic. They didn't vaccinate. They didn't wear masks. They didn't engage in lockdowns or partake in any other restrictions. Researchers have not been able to find a single definitive case of an Amish person dying of COVID after analyzing 10, tens of thousands of people. Now, they also said that they couldn't find a single unvaccinated Amish person with autism or several other conditions that affect people here in America. Again, I'm not making any uh, declarative statements. I'm just giving you guys information. You can do it what you will. Now, What we're seeing from governments all over the world is they are slowly retreating. They're slowly retreating from the compulsory mandates to vaccinate. Uh, The AstraZeneca vaccine has been discontinued by the federal government in Australia. Uh, It was linked to very rare but serious side effects. It has quietly been discontinued. So a lot of a, a, a lot of uh, people ended up having adverse reaction after taking the AstraZeneca shot there, and so they, after a while, they started recommending against Australians under sixty taking the AstraZeneca vaccine due to concerns over a potentially fatal blood clotting disorder, thrombosis with. Oh man, thrombosis. Dopenia syndrome, or TTS. Now, this change came after a number of cases of TSS, I'm sorry, TTS, amongst those age 50 through 59 years old, and the death of a 52-year-old woman with a blood clot, likely linked to the AstraZeneca vaccine. Despite the rarity of clots across all ages, the risk of developing of developing one was slightly higher in younger patients. So once again, we're seeing younger people affected by this. Also, thousands of people have said that, that they have developed tinnitus. Ringing of the ears. I think I've heard some of you say that after getting the jab. That you developed, uh, that you had some ringing in the ears. Uh, Some people have called in here and said that over the years. Now, again, there's no proof that the vaccine called this. This is just, again, information. Do it at what you will. We're seeing in Switzerland, they are not recommending the vaccine even for high-risk individuals during spring and summer. The country's latest recommend, recommendation can, 
regarding COVID-19 vaccinations and booster shots came directly from the Swiss Federal Office of Public Health, which declared most people in the country had either already been vaccinated or contracted or recovered from COVID-19 at that point. They said that they will reevaluate their recommendations later this year and update them as needed. So they're not pushing it or mandating it anymore. Uh, most European countries have also lifted vaccine requirements for foreign travelers. And some have even scaled back recommendations for younger people amid myocarditis concerns. All I'm, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying making any declarative statements. All I'm going to say is that I have a feeling there's going to be some lawsuits in the future. That's all I'm saying. There's going to be some lawsuits in the future. But let me know what you think. Give me a call, 219-885-1371. That number again, 219-885-1371. When we come back, happy happies.